Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I'll teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender 2.8 in Eevee. As always, it's going to be a quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. And before we start, make sure to download the latest version of Blender 2.8, link in the description. Okay, so first we need to scale the cube on the X and Y axis, so click S, then Shift Set, and then 10 to scale it 10 times on the X and Y axis. And then go to Edit Mode, and then face select, and then select the top face, right click to select, and then click X to delete the uh, top face. Now let's switch back to object mode. We also need some thickness for the object, so go to the modifiers, click add modifier, and then add the solidify modifier. And then let's set the thickness to 0 0.02 meters. And for the sake of the fluid simulation, apply the modifier. And then let's go into the physics, enable the fluid, and then set the type to obstacle. And then change the volume initialization to shell, so that the water interacts with the shell of the object. And uh, then we need to add the water inflow. So click add, then mesh, and then add a circle. And now we need to fill the circle, so uh, go to edit mode. And then click F to fill the circle. And then switch back to object mode. And now we need to grab it on the set axis. Click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. And then click R, X, the 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And then click S to uh, scale down the object. And then click G, then Y to grab it on the uh, Y axis. And in the final animation, we had uh, three water inflows. So let's uh, make some space for the other two. So click G and then X to grab the object on the X axis. And then left click to confirm the location. Then let's add the uh, fluid physics before we uh, duplicate the circle. So uh, enable fluid under physics and then set the type to inflow. And then let's change the volume initialization to shell and then set the Y value to uh, 10. So that it moves uh, 10 meters per second on the Y axis. Okay. And then we need to click shift S and then move the cursor to the selected object so that uh, when we add the cylinder, it's going to appear at uh, the middle of the circle. So I go to mesh and then add the cylinder and I click R, X, the 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And then we need to scale it down so that it's uh, slightly larger than the circle. So click S to scale. And in order to add the subdivision surface modifier, we need to go into edit mode and then hold in shift and select both faces on each side. And I click N and then increase the increase value to 1, so that when we add the subdivision surface modifier, those two faces will stay flat. So let's uh, go into the modifiers, add modifier, and add the subdivision surface modifier. And then let's set the subdivisions to 3. The next step is to turn this uh, cylinder into a tube. So uh, click uh, E, and left click, and click S to scale down the extrusion. And then left click again, and then click E to extrude inwards. And then hold in shift and select the uh, face on the back as well. And then click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis to make the tube a little bit longer. And then let's switch back to object mode. Right click to select the uh, circle. And then click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. Okay. And then we're going to add a material for the uh, tube. So right click to select. Then go into the materials, click new. And then let's add a uh, basic uh, blue color. At this point, you can add any color you want. It doesn't really matter. So just choose a color you like. And uh, now we need to duplicate the tube and the circle. So uh, hold and shift and select uh, both the tube and the circle. And uh, then we need to duplicate. So click shift D, then X to grab the duplication on the X axis. So shift D, then X. And then left click to confirm the uh, duplication. And then click shift D once again and then X to grab it on the X axis. At this point, you might need to increase the size of the water pool. So uh, right click to select the uh, water pool and then click S to scale. And maybe a little bit larger, so click S to scale once again, and then click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. Okay, so let's add the floor. So uh, left click below the uh, water pool to move the 3D cursor, which is where new objects will appear. And then click Add, Mesh, and then add a plane. 
then click S to scale up the plane and then left click to confirm the scale and then let's go into edit mode and let's add a wall so uh, go to edit mode and then go to edit select right click to select and then click E and then set to extrude on the set axis in order to make the floor and the wall larger we need to grab the edges on each side so uh, hold in shift and select uh, these two edges on the right side and then click G then X to grab them on the X axis and then left click to confirm and then select the uh, two edges on the left side and then click G then X to grab them on the X axis then select this one and then click G then Y to grab the floor on the Y axis so now I think it's big enough so uh, let's uh, create our first save before we continue so just give it a name, save it wherever you want on the computer and then click enter to save and before we add the fluid domain let's just make a few adjustments so uh, go to object mode and then hold in shift and select uh, all of the tubes and uh, water inflows and then click G then Y to grab them on the Y axis left click to confirm and then click G then set to grab them on the Z axis as well and uh, then select the water pool, click S to scale the next step is to add the domain which is the border for the fluid simulation so uh, go to add and then add a uh, cube and then click S to scale left click to confirm and uh, then click S then X to scale the domain on the x-axis and then click G then X to grab it on the x-axis next we need to scale the domain on the z-axis so uh, click S then set to scale the domain on the z-axis and then click G then set to grab it on the z-axis and then click S then set once again to scale the domain on the z-axis and then we need to go into the uh, fluid physics so enable uh, fluid and then set domain as the uh, type and then set the final resolution to around 200 just for the first animation we're going to increase that later and then set the viewport to final so that we can see the full resolution in the viewport and then change the end value to 8 which is basically the speed of the simulation and then let's make a test bake before we uh, continue so click bake and after a few minutes of baking you will have the uh, full simulation so let's move on the timeline and see what it looks like and as you can see it works and later on in the tutorial we'll bake at a even higher resolution so uh, let's uh, make a new save before we continue so go to file and then save as and then click on the plus sign and then click save as blend file as you can see right now the uh, tubes seems a bit too small so we need to select them and then scale them on the X and Z axis so hold in shift and select all of them and then change the pivot point to the individual origins and then click S then shift Y to scale them only on the X and Z axis so as you can see the tubes become wider and then we need to add a light source so uh, select the uh, lamp right click to select and then go into the uh, light settings and then change it into a sun and uh, then we need to grab it and rotate it so click G to grab and R to rotate and then left click to confirm the rotation and then let's go into rendered view to see what it looks like so set the uh, shading to rendered right now the light setup is way too basic for a glass shader so we need to go into the background settings set the color to environment texture and then click open and then go to the link in the description to download one of the uh, background images I decided to download the Chelsea stairs and once it's downloaded you need to unzip the file and then go back to blender and open the uh, image so select the HDR file and then click open image and as you can see we have the background image so uh, now it's time to add the glass shader so select the water and then go to the materials 
new material and then set the surface to uh, glass let's set the roughness to uh, zero and for transparency enable screen space refraction and then for the glass IOR just set it to uh, 4 divided by 3 okay and then we need to go into the EV render settings to enable the screen space refractions so that uh, the shader actually becomes transparent so enable it and then enable refraction as well and as you can see it has become transparent if you want to you can also add a color to the um, water so um, let's go into the material and I'm going to make the water slightly blue it's not really realistic but it looks a little bit better so something like this and then we also need to add a material for the uh, floor and the wall so uh, select it and uh, let's change the surface from principled to glossy and uh, let's decrease the roughness to maybe around 1.16 and make it way darker and if you want to hide the grid and the uh, light source for example from the viewport you need to hide the overlay so uh, let's uh, disable it and uh, let's go into the render settings so uh, let's change the viewport and render samples to 200 we also need to grab the water pool on the set axis because right now it's uh, kind of too far down if you look below the floor so uh, select it and I click G then set to grab it on the set axis you can also change the color of the water pool it doesn't really matter what color you add so just experiment with the colors you can make it completely dark, you can make it grey, you can make it white so just uh, select the color you want and uh, then let's hide the overlay I think I'm going to uh, change the color for the tube as well so let's make it uh, slightly more blue and uh, then we need to hide the inflow circles in the uh, tubes so select the uh, circle and uh, click new and then select transparent and then select uh, the second circle you can do that in the uh, top right corner and then uh, copy the same material which in this case is uh, material number four and as you can see it's completely transparent I decided to change the color of the wall slightly and then let's click numpad zero to look through the camera and then lock camera to view so that uh, the uh, camera follows your point of view so let's say it's here maybe a little backwards and then we need to increase the range of the camera so right click to select the camera and then increase the end value and in order to make the water inflow a little bit stronger you can select the uh, circle and then go into the physics settings and increase the inflow velocity value on the y-axis so let's set it to 12 for all of the uh, inflow circles so uh, 12 meters per second and uh, then let's select the water once again and add some smooth shading so go to object and then shade smooth so that we get some smooth shading now I'm still going to increase the resolution for the uh, water simulation so uh, you might want to set it to 250, 300, or even 400, depending on how fast your computer is. So uh, I'm going to set it to 400, and uh, then bake the animation. This is probably going to take maybe an hour of baking, but uh, once it's done, it's going to look really good. So uh, let's set the camera here, and then bake the animation once again and after a long time of baking this is what it looks like so uh, let's save before we continue so click file and then save as and then click on the plus sign and then save as blend file now if you want to make some adjustments to the materials this is the time to do it because we're going to get into the render settings and start the render very soon so uh, for example you can select the water pool and try out some different colors before we get into the render settings so something like this and then select the uh, render output icon and 
then change the frame rate to 30 fps and then select a folder on the computer for the outputs which is where the rendered animation will be saved so just give the animation a name I'm just going to call it Fluid3 and then we need to change the file format from PNG to AVI JPEG if you know how to use PNG you can just use PNG but I prefer to use AVI JPEG for these tutorials set the quality to 100% and then uh, let's save it once again before we start the render so go up to render and then change the display mode to image editor and then click render and then render animation and after a few minutes of rendering you will have the full animation and uh, that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i will post more ev tutorials very soon so thanks for watching and subscribe